think as you're all aware, in 2008, global capitalism shattered. The financial system came close to a total collapse. $50 trillion of wealth was erased almost overnight. And economic pain drove people out into the streets all over the world. Since then, we've had a deep recession, a tepid recovery, and widening economic disenfranchisement. Among the high school graduates who have left school since the recession, only 16% of them have found full-time work, and nearly 40% are still looking for jobs. 25 million Americans are either unemployed, underemployed, or marginally attached to the labor force. That's the equivalent of the population of a medium-sized country. Poverty rates are climbing to levels not seen in half a century. Um, it's estimated that one in six American households now lives in poverty, <coughs> and 45 million Americans are on food stamps. Now, the national conversation about how to solve this problem has been deeply frustrating. It is dominated by differences between 1930s Keynesianism and conservative calls for austerity, which means it's confined to a narrow conversation uh, about how much the balance of market and government should change. We're barely talking about the vital questions of the distributions of income, wealth, and property about the norms that govern markets, or about how investment decisions should be made. But there's an even more important reason that the current conversation is failing, and that has to do with what's happening to the planet. During the same time that the global economy went into free fall, and in the years since then, the news on climate has gone from bad to worse to catastrophic. A growing number of scientists have warned that carbon dioxide levels beyond 350 parts per million in the atmosphere are incompatible with a preserving a planet, quote, similar to that on which civilization developed. But we are already at 396 and rising, and the speed of ch climate change is well beyond anything envisioned by the last round of published models by the IPCC. And of course, climate change does not just affect weather. We rely on climate for food and water. Australia recently ended its worst drought in history. The US is now experiencing the widest drought that it has had since the 1950s, with 60% of the country now living in drought conditions. Grain yields are predicted to plummet, which will push up global food prices that have already seen record levels in recent years. As we destabilize the climate, we'll increasingly be unable to feed ourselves, and that will trigger a range of ugly outcomes. If current trends continue, some scientists predict that by 2050, the oceans will be devoid of fish, which is the animal protein on which one billion people in the world rely for their primary protein source. Yet, it is as if the people charged with tending the economy have been completely unaware of what's going on with climate and the planet. The main conversation has been about how to put more money back into people's pockets to get them back to buying cars, any cars, building houses of any size, and accumulating more stuff. The disagreements are mostly about whose hands to put the money into. The super wealthy, the merely well-to-do, the middle class. The focus is on what I call indiscriminate growth, a trickle-down approach to jobs. But we know that trickle-down economics does not work. Four years after the downturn, we remain trapped in an economic framework that relies on reviving a highly destructive pattern of production and consumption, and the fiction that our economic system is basically sound. 
as the world hurdles toward an ecological precipice of unfathomable dimensions, the mainstream economic conversation has been about how to get us there faster.